Look, we are talking about the judicial overreach, which the lawyers seem not to agree with. How do you balance that then with the rule of law? You know, Trevor, you don't have to be a lawyer to read some of these things. Mm. Just try and Google what exactly judicial overreach is. Try and understand how actually this works, the separation of power works. Yeah. In all the accomplished, what you call democracies, nothing like what's happening in our country right now. One of the uh, uh, most celebrated cases in, 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 in law mm -hmm. is uh, Madison. Uh, Marbury versus Madison. Madison. Madison, yeah, Marbury versus Madison. In which a president had appointed somebody as a justice of peace. Everything went through to the end. The only thing is that the final bit of serving that was not done and the president left the office. So the new president refused to, to, to receive it. So he went to court. The Marbury went to court. Yes, they said, you have, you are grieved, yes. There's a remedy, yes. You can get orders, yes, but we cannot order the executive. We can't order the president. That was actually the basis for uh, the, one of the very first landmark cases on judicial review. Now, for us, for the courts to pretend <coughs> to do the things that are happening in this country is anarchy and chaos. It's the, the height of ignorance of the philosophy of how law operates in a democracy. And, and we, we are in a very bad situation. To the extent where, at one time, a judge said that uh, gay people have a right to associate. They say the law is an us. But as long as it's not repealed, <laughs> you know, or amended, it still, it still remains the law. Mm. And in our own penal code, <coughs> gay is a crime. It's a criminal offense. Here is a judge coming out there and saying that, you know, they have a right to associate. Mm. It's tantamount to saying that murderers have a right to associate, <laughs> criminals have a right to associate. You know what I mean? The ones who, uh, coup plotters have a right to associate. Because this thing is a crime in our own penal code right now. Until such time that the law is amended or repealed, whatever something is done, the, the, it still remains an, 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 what you call a crime. Okay. And then this guy, judge, goes out there and says, because he has seen some stuff and he wants to be in good books with the LBGTQ, whatever it is, where they are, the, whole, the rest of the world to be celebrated there, he comes up with this. So there is serious judicial overreach, yeah. judicial activism. And, and, and you know, you only, you can, the Constitution is very clear. You shoot down a piece of legislation, not an intended legislation. Not telling Parliament you cannot enact a law like this. Uh, this uh, if, I were, if I were uh, in the government, and I'm not, I'm not talking about the merits and the demerits of the housing levy itself. Mm. I'm talking about how democracy should work and how the law should be applied in any civilized situation. Because tomorrow, I could be the president. Sifona is much younger than me. He could be the president. He has a chance of becoming a president. Ngatana has a chance of becoming a president. I have a chance of becoming a president. Although, he, when I first went to parliament, he was nine years old. <laughs> Sifuna was nine. <laughs> and now, now I'm here. <laughs> and, and, now, and now he's here. <laughs> and I'm trying to tell him, don't, not so fast, you know. Yeah. Don't, don't. It's like the Icaras. You know, remember the Icaras <laughs> who flew up there? Yeah, but you, you have all the energy. Yeah. And you have all that, but uh, uh, slow down. Mm -hmm. Listen to the elders. Otherwise, you're going to <laughs> melt your, your wax up there and <laughs> take, and fall take from a fall. The sky. Down, yeah. So, yeah. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that, look, let us be a nation of laws. If you want to be a nation of anarchy, fair enough. If you can go and demonstrate there, does he have the instruments of government? But is, it, is it ignoring the court? No, no, as an it, no, no. The courts, the courts are wrong. The courts are plain wrong. But then, how do you decide? Because if you say that, then yes. how do you decide that this is this is the right uh, law by the court and this is wrong? You see, you go back to parliament and say, make the law for this. Anytime you find a lacuna in law, yeah. Or you find it's, it's saying we can't we can't what you call arbitrate on this because there's no law. But Sefuna says the judges can make the law. But what about the remedy? If there's an appeal, you can go all the way to the Supreme Court. You Isn't can that? go to, all the way to the Supreme Court, but even the Supreme Court will announce itself this and say, look, this is not provided for in law. So go back and get let Parliament create the law. When you don't have a law, then the status quo ante remains. Trevor, okay. You get my point. You don't legislate from the bench. Okay.
That's, you can't legislate from the bench. The same way you cannot run the judiciary from the, from the executive or, or parliament cannot run. Parliament cannot. You see, we have something called subjudice in law here. Yeah. Any matter that's before, before a court cannot be discussed in parliament. Not that what is in court itself, the parliament is not is, is sufficiently uh, 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 qualified to discuss that. Parliament can discuss things. But because it's in court, you don't. The same way, what is in parliament, the courts cannot part into it. They wait until the piece of legislation comes out of it. What kind of courts do we have right now? Where you can go anywhere in the country and get orders. And then, how do you get orders on the government on such a big thing, ex parte? And you can serve the government. The government is in every village. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Government is everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's not that I can't find the government to serve these things to them. You understand my point? Instead of making the service to the government, yeah. you offer these things ex parte, and any judge anywhere will say, no, oh, I've given these orders. Now, that is that is ignorance of the law. I think we got too many people who are not qualified to become judges who are out there and are basically coming out with what you call judicial despotism, <laughs> informed more than anything else mm. by ignorance okay. of, of, of the philosophy of law and the way democracy works and the way that suppression itself works. Because if you don't, if if they continue doing what they're doing, the executive has got the instruments of government. The government, mm. the legislature has got the ins instruments of lawmaking. The legislature can come together right now and make any law. Okay. You get my point? Uh, so you try to butt into those two arms. Mm -hmm. If they decide also to maintain, to come with despotism, executive despotism, or they come up with legislative despotism, they'll make you relevant the following day. Mm -hmm. Because these guys can, can, can change the law anytime they want and, and, and shackle your hands as judiciary and throw you out. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to tell them is that let the judiciary be a teacher for the nation. Let them do something way above the very things that they're engaging in right now. Yeah. It's good for our country. But there was a dialogue between executive and judiciary. Was that... Look, like there is, there is, you see, ordinarily, let me tell you one thing. Yeah. Ordinarily, uh, uh, you know, the same American constitution, you remember the American constitution, which is the mother of all constitutions, classified the black man as a three-fifth of a of a, of a person. Yes, of a person. <laughs> but then it says, it talks of uh, the, the preamble of the constitution itself, equality. Is all men are equal. Equality of man. We are all created equal. Mm. Uh, you, you know what I mean? We are all created equal. But within the same, again, it says a black man is, or a slave is a three-fifth of a. There's a contradiction in there. The contradiction. But when you read that, you look at the sociological atmosphere at the time when this constitution was created. Because that's when we are, they were practicing slavery, left, mm. right, and center. So. You, you need to understand a lot of things way beyond the figurative face value of the Constitution itself. Ah, the Constitution says this article, you have a right to a clean air. I need a clean air because I was working from sea and, and you know, I can't even breathe because there's too much yeah. pollution. And it, of course, pollution is there. You, you get my point? Okay. You don't do that. All right. You, you, you see what I mean? Yeah. So what I'm basically trying to say is yeah. that, look, all these very uh, lofty, flowery, good intentions in the Constitution itself, uh, with this, there's what's called a non-judiciability. There's things that you cannot, the judiciary cannot adjudicate on. Okay. So Sifuna, how do we, how do we uphold the, public, the separation the, of powers? The public can see why I cannot 